a stone carvable, but only to soon later stop and realize that, kid, if your poems have too many other poets in it, you have to throw the poets away and keep your own damn poem. I am not unique. I write poetry as a means to explore not merely audible conduits from my intentions to minds and hearts, but also to express what rests dormant in an otherwise repressing static stoic state of self. That is again to say that I am far from the unique. I write out this self-pressed static state of stoicism like all poets to practically pounce floor bound from this stage, this anger, this rage, this day and age where I too can write and bounce my chest skyward like an upward facing dog. Poetry is no longer unique. Poetry exists to give the underdog a voice in a choiceless life with an otherwise trifled, strife-filled path laid out in front of him that reads like a 60-year-old set of dreads locked in the idea that what poetry is must somehow be universal. To write poems about poetry is absolute pretension. But to pretend that poetry is not pretentious is to pretend that the poet is not also his poem. Yet to purposely pretend that I'm not bilabially poised over this line of voiceless stops is to say that this poem is graced with less verbiose syllabatry than the stanzas so accessibly deserve, thus becoming again the potatoed poem with the too many eyes. For if the poem is the poet, and the poet to the poem, and if poems are no longer unique, then us poets too have to be obsolete. I'm not unique to neither of these poems. Poetry is no longer separable from the individual. And the individual has so readily become the excessive mass of last resorting bipolar creationists that I am dragged down too. But don't worry, this doesn't make me unique. Poetry in and of itself, without us, is expressionless. Uniqueness, begging the poet to write it in such a way that it can become something new. Poetry is an infinite gestalt of probabilities couched in the intentions of becoming something different each time that it is expressed. And when the poem becomes the million-eyed beast of a poem, the hundred-headed hydra poem that reeks of the poet before you, and the poet before you, and the poet before me, and we completely fail the genre of poetry by imitating, by not exploring, by not creating daily, newly, uniquely, this static, frozen state of self becomes all of us and we collectively do not move forward. We are couched in a genre of infinite possibilities, and if we do not start to slay the hydra that poetry has become, then poetry loses all of its uniqueness, and with it, we have completely lost ourselves. So now I'm